Well, hello there, friends. This is Captain Canuck, and it is time to cast another pub game. So we're going to jump into this one right here. RS Int. Um, I have a feeling this is like a knockoff of Rattlesnake Int, maybe, um, versus Night Streets. So we'll, we'll see what's going on here. This is near the uh, last page of the team games um, on the main menu here. So I have a feeling there's going to be some uh, scrubby-ass shit. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So anyways, getting into this game here. A um, couple announcements coming up this Tuesday. Um, by the time this video is uploaded, it will be Monday the 10th, which means that on Tuesday the 11th, we will be having, um, over on the AD2L, we will be having a uh, casters versus admins game. So basically, um, we're just going to get all of the tournament admins to face off against all of the uh, casters, and um, we're, we're going to have just a big game. It'll, it'll be fun. I think... Um, I think the proposed idea was that we were going to do three games and they would be of equal ridiculousness in all aspects. So we'd start off with like a, like we said, we'd do like one ability draft, one all mid, and then like one for serious game or something like that. I'm still not clear on the details, but uh, it will be happening sometime in the evening. I think about 6.30 PST is the planned time for um, <clears throat> for that to be going down. So definitely tune in. Um, I should be having this going on my stream, as well as uh, there will be a couple others active. Um, aside from that, 82L Season 3 has kicked off, so uh, every Thursday those games will be casted. They'll be starting up an Invitational as well soon, too, which will... Uh, uh, include a lot of the top teams from the previous 82Ls, such as uh, Team Lucid. Uh, we've got um, Cubano's team. I, I can't remember the name of his team. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Los Los Pollos or Los Mipos Hermanos. That was it. That was it. That's his team. He's going to be playing in that. And uh, I know we've got a couple others. I think America's Finest Dota players and um, Wingardium Leviosa, etc. They're all going to be playing in that uh, Invitational tournament. So it's going to be really good. Looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, things things gearing up to be awesome. So check out all of that stuff as it comes up. And yeah, we're looking good. I'm also going to be casting for the uh, Tactic Hive Dota 2 Beta Cup. Uh, you can check that out by going to tactichive.com. Um, there's signups for that as well, I think. I'm not sure how full they are, but I... Oh, somebody didn't load. Somebody didn't load. And now we got to find another game to watch. What a shame. Alright, so yeah. I'll uh, try to keep the ball rolling here. See what uh, see what we can get done. But uh, yeah, Tactic Hive Dota 2 Beta Cup. Um, it's looking good, man. It's looking good. It's uh, I think there's still spots. Uh, you can check on their website to confirm. I am not 100% sure. But... Um, yeah, it, look, it looks like it's going to be a really good tournament. Um, and the finals of that tournament will be casted by Jerax and myself. I'll be co-casting with him, and uh, it's it's looking to be awesome. I cannot wait for it. It's going to be fun time. So anyways, let's uh, let's hop into this game here. Hive Gaming versus VL. Um, I'm sure we'll see what VL stands for as we get into the game. Five seconds remaining until it starts off here. Oh, yeah, moved up. All right, all right, there we go. Hopefully this one doesn't screw up. This happened to me last week, too, man. I, like, tried to cast, like, three games, and in each of the three games that I connected to, somebody didn't load, and I just, like, restarted the video. This time I'm just going to keep going. But, yeah, I got the sexy-ass invoker background. Oh, my God, I love this. I, I don't like this. I don't like the cosmetics as much. Like, I, I really like them. They look good. But I still prefer my heaven-piercing pauldrons. Um... Yeah, it's just my favorite set. But, uh, yeah, the new background, the Dota Cinema set, is really, really nice. So, I'm loving it. Anyways, getting into this game. Hive Gaming versus VL, who I'm sure we will see what they, uh, see what VL stands for. Maybe in the draft? I don't know. I, I hope so. I'll have to see. Yeah, everybody's connected, so we're a little bit better off than we were before. Flag yet. Alright, so it's just going to be VL, and I think their little logo here just says VL Gamers, so um, VL it is. Is that maybe supposed to be like level? No, no, that's, that's definitely VL. Why is the L capitalized, but the V isn't? You know what? I'm, I'm going to Google them. I'm going to see if they have like a clan website. VL Gamers, Steam Community Group. Ten seconds remaining. Nope. 
That's not them. Five seconds remaining. Maybe it is them actually. Got Radiant kind of like a tiger, a, a tiger thing here. Let's, let's pull this up on the screen. VL Gamers, is this them? I don't know, man. They've got like kind of a tiger thing for their logo, and these guys kind of have a tiger thing as well. I don't know. VL Gamers Dota 2. Hmm. Gfinity Esports and Online Ten Gaming VL Gamers. Virtuous Legion? Five seconds remaining. Virtuous Legion? Reserve time. I don't think that oh maybe. Radiant team pick. We've got like a Dota 2 tag on there. Yeah. Maybe? Oh god, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'm trying too hard for this. They'll just go by VL for this. Anyways, getting into the game here, we got a TA Bloodseeker, Viper, and Doombringer ban out. Um, and, uh, alright, so VL taking this in a little bit of a strange direction right off the bat. Banning out Bloodseeker is almost never seen anyways. they picking up Ursa and Weaver right off the bat. I'm going for a little bit more standard uh, picks and bans. Getting rid of Doom and Viper, both heroes we see a lot nowadays. And the Ancient Apparition and the Rubik are picked up by them, so they got a good, uh, Good try lane combo going on, and uh, now getting into the bands again. The uh, gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the Venomancer and uh, Io banned out by Hive uh, to make sure that that is not comboed up with the Ursa because that is a very potent combo. So uh, seems like Hive's got a little bit better of a uh, competitive Dota head on their shoulders. Um, however, who knows, man? Pump strats can pump pump strats can always prevail. Now. Something I've been noticing in my uh, recent games that I feel is worth sharing to the world is the uh, drafting process for uh, ranked games. Now, I've seen... I, I am personally at a solo MMR of about 4,100. Um, and I bounce up and down. I've been to 43, 4,400, and I've been back down to 3,800, and I've been fluctuating ever since. So I'm, I've been on the rise. Hopefully I can get a little bit higher than I am. But uh, something I've been noticing for my range of play, and, uh, well, I also, sorry, another point I meant to make was that I uh, queue with people all over the spectrum. Like, I have a lot of friends that are solo MMR of, like, 2,400, um, and so I have a pretty wide array of of uh, levels of play that I play at. So, that being said, um, I, I'm, I'm, it's fair to say that I am not in a competitive level. I'm not, you know, 5,000 plus. I am not playing with pro players. Um, so that that is not where I stand. However, um, at my amateur level, which is where most people will tend to be, most people that watch these videos at least, um, you know, you'll be, about, be, you'll be around my level of play. So, to say that, a lot of what I've noticed in recent games is that the team that wins always has a solid front run. And, uh, you know, it's, it seems like kind of an obvious thing, but it's not really. Um, and I've seen a lot of people trying to pick teams that, uh, you know, have really strong laning phases, you know, like Bane, Marana, etc. Um, you get, like, you know, good laners like OD or Puck or um, even Invoker or something, and then you get like a Weaver or something on the off lane, and you get like, you know, you get a good team, but you don't really have like that front line, like almost like 95% 90, of the time, team that wins has something like a Doom or a Bristleback or a Timbersaw or a Treant Protector or a Clockwork or something that can just get up in your face and just like Five absorb damage. And I think it's a lot to do with the fact that uh, players at this level don't know how to kind of prioritize who to jump on and uh, so a lot of damage ends up getting wasted on these beefy ass heroes and so uh, heroes like Doom have just been incredibly popular so um, advice for players out there I'd say in your games try to prioritize having a front line whether that be you know an Earthshaker initiating uh, Darkseer getting up in people's faces, Night Stalker, Doom whatever something that can just absorb some damage cause some havoc and just force people to kind of mess up and uh, you know like I said uh, as you get a little bit higher up into those pro tiers people can afford to play lineups that don't really have those tanky front lines 
but um, you know it's something that uh, works really really well at uh, the level of play that I was mentioning so anyways while I was rambling about that we we blew through a lot here so uh, Nature's Prophet and Shadow Shaman were the next two bands out uh, VL follows this up by grabbing themselves a Chen and a Silencer and uh, Hive grabbed themselves Life Stealer and Clockwork so I'm liking this tri line here very potent very uh, very easy to get Five kills on. Um, the Clockwork as well, really solid offlaner, but I'm really kind of worried about um, this he's lineup here. Time. They're, they're going to be really obnoxious now. Um, Chen, if he's a good Chen, he'll have a lot of creeps up front and uh, be able to just cause some havoc for these guys. Um, as well, the Silencer. I mean, just silence against a Rubik is just absurd. And uh, pick an Axe as well. What the hell? Alright, so Hive got themselves a little bit more of a standard lineup here. We're going to see a Nagasire in mid, a Clockwork on the off lane, and then this will be a tri lane, likely on the safe lane, but uh, they could rotate it out considering there is a Chen, which means a Chen will probably be in the jungle, so uh, throwing this on an aggressive tri lane would actually work out very well for them. Um, I think the way this is looking, it will probably be aggro, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Now, um, Axe, I'm really curious about him. I think he's probably going to be going towards that mid lane, because they have a Chen, so we won't be going in the jungle. However, he does pick up Counter Helix first. Uh, okay, Holy Persuasion cool also taken by Chen, so Chen is definitely going to be jungling in some regard now. Um, they have picked up... Hmm. Is Axe going to be landing with Ursa? Axe and Ursa, Silencer mid, and then Weaver on the safe... Wait, Ursa's like heading down to bottom. Huh. Pretty confused here. I think it'll be Axe and Ursa... It, it actually should probably be Axe mid, but it doesn't look like that's what he's going to go for. Look at this build, man. Look at this build. Boots and Ring of Protection. What the fuck? He's got a little bit of armor, he's got a little bit of move speed, but what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Anyways, yeah, Silencer. Hmm. How's this going to play? Because this looks like Ursa's going bottom. And Weaver kind of looks like he's going up towards, like, top or mid or something. But... I don't... Ursa's not really good on the offlane. He's really bad on the offlane, actually. He can't really do much. We'll have to see when this plays out, because there... I mean, this is kind of just Pub Dota at its finest. I have no clue what this team is going to be doing. Uh, VL is just kind of off the charts here. So, anyways, Hive Gaming, though, they've got a little bit more of a standard lineup. Like I said, Clockwork will be going to the offlane, which is probably actually going to be the safe lane. He's probably going to go down here, and we're going to have the uh, Rubik. Oh, well, maybe not. All right, so... Life Stealer is heading down to the safe lane, and, uh, you know, alright, that's fine. Um, I mean, I think having the Life Stealer farmed means a lot more to uh, Hive. Are they going to go aggro with the Clockwork? They're going to go aggro with Clock. Cool. I like that. I like that. We have Life Stealer solo, and then Naga mid. I am totally fine with that. Like I said, they're, they're good running an aggressive lane, and the Clockwork will help out with that. Um, I think the Life Stealer might be better, but at least this way, Life Stealer is safe to get as much farm as he wants. Now he is going to be one v one against an Ursa, which is not a fight that uh, Life Stealer wins when it comes down to uh, just a straight up brawl. I mean, uh, Life Stealer has the advantage of being able to chase a little bit better, and uh, he can get himself out of fights if he gets in trouble. But um, just straight one v one man fight, Ursa wins. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Coming up to the mid lane, uh, mid game though, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mid and late game though, when uh, Life Stealer's got himself a uh, Basher, uh, maybe an Assault Trials or, or an Armlet or something, he's gonna start uh, outscaling that Ursa and should be able to win that engagement. So I have to keep an eye on him. Each separation? What do you do? Okay, so sports were just kind of rotating up around there, and they're gonna come back down. So we do have. Uh, the tri lane that I expected down here. Now it is going to be an Ursa and a Silencer on this off lane here, Double death. which is uh, actually going to be is going to be bad news. Bad news bears. I think uh, I think Ursa is going to die a lot in this lane. Now in the mid we do have the Weaver versus the Naga. Um, we've got a Jungle Chen and then Axe solo against the Clockwork. So this isn't uh, too terrible, but uh, once again I think VL is going to lose this lane hard. Um, I mean, once that uh, once that TK Cold Feet combo comes out, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, and uh, one of these heroes is going to die. There's not much anybody else can do to interrupt it. I mean, no stuns on the part of either of these, and the best you can hope for is that last word, like, disarms Life Stealer or something like that, but uh, that's not something you can really bank on, because he's just going to rage out of whatever you do, so um, I think it's just up to, uh, up to Hive to set the pace here and just jump on him and 
uh, take that advantage because I mean any time, any any second right now, this this um, this Ruby could just walk up and grab anybody, and the second he does, it's it's free kills. Now uh, they're gonna have to wait for level two to do that though because Cold Feet was not taken by each and person. Instead, he took the chilling touch. Either way, let's jump over to the last hits. Uh, now these aren't going to be too telling as we are only a moment into the game. But uh, 8 up on the life stealer already, so he is leading the charts. And uh, Naga Siren and Weaver trading pretty evenly. And uh, Chen following shortly behind as he is in the jungle. So uh, his last hits don't really count though. Now, uh, Axe vs. Clock. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Not one I see very... Well, not one I've ever really seen. Um, but I think how it's going to turn out is that... Uh, you know, if Axe ends up in the cogs, Clockwork wins that because uh, it means that uh, Axe isn't going to be eating attacks from uh, outside the cogs because, I mean, these creeps will be trapped outside. So if it is just the two of them in the cogs, Axe wins that. But if Clockwork manages to catch any of his own creeps or any of the enemy creeps inside of those cogs, uh, he could be in trouble as well because uh, his own creeps will attack Axe and cause that counter helix to just go crazy like it is right there. Oh my Jesus. Um, and... Um, and if he catches any of his or any of the enemy creeps, then battery assault is half. Now they're looking for action down on here on the bottom lane. They levitate back the silencer, and uh, there it is, that level two kill that I was talking about. Once the uh, three of them hit level level two, then they had the open wounds. They had the uh, chilling feet or the, the the cold feet and the levitate. And from then on, it was history. Silencer drops and is the first blood. Now up on the mid lane, uh, Naga is actually beating out this Weaver, which is something I never really expected. Weaver, I mean, Naga really never has to, or Weaver really never has to be close enough for uh, Naga to be able to beat her out of this lane, but uh, it's, it's happening. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Oh, man, that creep cancels the clarity. That's, that's unfortunate. And his bottle, Boots actually coming up to the Weaver. All right, I would have suspected he'd go bottle first. He's got a lot better room control than this Naga, too, but... Uh, He's just not doing it. I mean, he saw that Invis was there, but uh, he didn't Sakuchi for it or anything. He kind of just half-assed walked up there, and when Naga got it first, he said, oh, well, whatever. Looks like Rubik's going to get some stacking and pulling going on here. Curse the Silent goes on in the Ancient Apparition, throws a chilling feet, or a cold, yeah, chilling touch, cold feet, chilling feet, cold touch. Uh, He's gonna throw out that chilling touch just to uh, just to break that, and then throws out some damage. Now this is uh, one thing that uh, Silencer does have going for him in this lane is that uh, Curse of the Silent can uh, only really be broken by high mana abilities. I mean the uh, the hero that's gonna have the easiest time breaking that is the Life Stealer by popping into Rage, and even then that is 75 mana out of uh, his 260 mana pool, which is not huge. The Rubik, both of his spells over 100 mana. And uh, the Ancient Apparition, same deal with him. So uh, I think once uh, AA gets a point in that Ice Vortex, he'll have a little bit of an easier time with that. But even then, 80 mana for that, um, it's going to be really, really hard to break that Curse of the Silent if the Silencer continues to spam it on cooldown. Uh, they're looking for him. Open Wounds goes out, and they're dishing out the damage. Cold Feet up on the uh, Silencer, and one more attack from the Life Stealer will finish him off. Silencer drops and is the second kill of this game. Naga Siren grabs herself that uh, regen rune, so she's going to be able to stay in this lane forever. Still Weaver, man. What are you doing? He's running back to base right now because he just couldn't stay in the lane. I mean, this is something that I find extremely obscure. I mean, Weaver should be able to take this lane no problemo. I mean, when she's sitting up here, you can just be sitting here taking pot shots at her and, uh, you know, nothing really to stop her. I mean, if you if Naga tries to turn around and, like, net and, and, uh, and net and riptide her, it's like... Well, okay, that's, like, all of your mana for, you know, a couple hundred damage, maybe. And, uh, you know, Weaver should be fine with that, but uh, he's just not having a good time. He's, like, he's not really harassing her at all. I mean, look look at his play here. He's just, like, auto-attacking creeps whenever he can. He gets a deny here, but uh, he's not repositioning himself. He's not taking shots where he can. He tries to get that creep. Doesn't happen. Even cancels his own auto-attack on the Naga. So he's just, like, trying not to hit her. That's what it feels like. I mean, he could be dominating this lane. He's just not... Yeah, he does, uh, what's he doing? Checking for a room? I guess he's just gonna sit here and wait for it. Cool. He's coming up the river, but they know he's here. I mean, Life Stealer saw him, the Ward saw him, everything saw him. And, uh, Rune does spawn down here, so Weaver can grab that if he wants it, but, uh, 
Anyways, we're in like a tri lane now, and he's like scooching forward looking for action, but uh, really nothing gonna happen. A sentry ward even placed by this Rubik ready to go on him, and uh, he's gonna find life stealing in the jungle, but uh, that won't really mean much. Sentry is dropped, and they're looking for him. Where is he? Means, meanwhile, Axe grabs the uh, clockwork behind the tower there, gets that kill. Now looking for that Weaver, and the net goes out, levitate back, and they, oh my god, the damage. Life Stealer picks up that kill, and uh, Weaver is hating life right now, hating life. Now, uh, Axe did get that kill on the clock, and I didn't manage to see what happened, but he was in behind the tower, so I suspect that uh, Axe just kind of got up in his shit. Maybe, uh, no, I probably didn't give him the old ka-chunk, but, uh, yeah. That, uh, he is maxing Battle Hunger first, as opposed to uh, maxing the Counter Helix, which uh, is a lot better in lane, and uh, will make Clockwork really, really hard to... Uh, uh, it'll make Clockwork's job really, really hard. Now, uh, I mean, of course, seeing it as, as it is just a solo versus solo lane, uh, it should be decently easy for Clockwork to get that last hit he needs to break it, but even so, if it is spammed by Axe, it, it, it can be really rough, especially, like, take like right now for instance right as he kills that creep you throw battle hunger on him and he's either got to get all the way through the siege creep and outlast hit his own creeps which i mean he screwed it up there so imagine battle hunger going on him right as he killed that range creep it would have ticked to its full damage like he, he would have had nothing so i mean it's it's still a ridiculous ability now a couple centaurs here up on the chin maybe we'll see him gank in a moment but uh, we'll have to see action down on the bottom lane is axe dp down and was looking for uh Looking for a fight. Life Stealer actually dropping pretty low. They're going to give him a salve, but uh, it's not going to keep him alive. He's trying to eat his tangos through there, and one very, very last tick of Battle Hunger will kill him off. He just didn't manage to find that last hit. I mean, he should have walked out of the creep wave trying to deny something, but uh, he was trying to regen through it. They gave him a salve. They gave him a tango. They gave him everything they could, but uh, just wasn't enough. Life Stealer falls. The top lane, we do have these centaurs up here in the lane now. Clockwork is trying to chip away at that one of them. A little scared to come too far forward, though. Nagasaren, looking for action. Oh, man, throw the net, dude. You can net couriers, by the way. Um, oh, man, there we go. There goes the clockwork hook, and uh yeah, going to drop. He pops that hand of God first, but he is going to fall. Now, action down in the bottom lane. In the meantime, looking for that ancient apparition. He's dropping really low. He will fall to one final auto attack from the uh, Ursa. Now looking for that life seal, but he's free to run away. There's nothing really there to hold him down. Uh, Rubik retreats off to the side, and he's going to get out of that. 4-3, to three, your kill score here. 8 minutes and 5, 45 seconds into this game. And uh, VL, pub strats working out for them a little bit. Uh, you know, they're still behind on the CS, as you can see on the board here. We've got uh, 48 up on that Naga Siren. She's doing ridiculously well. She's got herself a hand of Midas, and uh, no boots quite yet, but we'll see her pick those up in a moment. Uh, the Life Stealer, he's 42 and 1, so uh, he's farming himself up pretty damn well. Looks like he's going for a Yasha first, so we'll see a, a quick Sanjay Yasha out of him. Uh, I would have liked to see actually like a Midas Drones out of him, because, uh, I mean, he's, he's got the license too. He's had free farm. Uh, there's nothing really stopping him from getting as much gold as he possibly can. Chen, in the meantime, has 37 last hits. He's been up in that jungle for most of the game, so like I said, those don't really count, because a lot of those are, you know, little tiny satyrs, small camp, etc. Uh, the Axe... Sitting right behind him, and uh, he was doing all right in lane 21 and 3. The Clockwork is 18 and 0, so uh, Clockwork a little by, a little far behind. Now uh, the Nog Siren, she's going to pop the Siren and Siren and just run herself away from bad situation, which I don't mind one. Well, I mean, should not have been in a bad situation to begin with, but, uh, you know, you got to make what you can of it, and she uh, recognizes that situation instead of, uh, you know, running into it and hoping for the best. Now, uh, oh man, they're going on the silencer. Levitate, cold feet, dishing out the damage, and uh, one auto attack by Rubik will take that last hit. So Rubik uh, grabs himself that kill, and that will provide him with a thousand gold that he needs for his arcane boots, which uh, is a really good early pickup to have on on uh, that route. He lands and creeps pushing in here. Not going to do too much though. <laughs> Ursa really looking for that uh, Vladimir's offering. He should have had that a long time ago, but uh, seeing as how uh, pressured his lane was, I mean, like I said, Ursa should have been on that safe lane. To uh, have him have him off against that tri lane was absolutely absurd. I mean, you can see it reflected in the uh, um, in his gold. I mean, he, he doesn't even have his Vlads yet at 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. Uh, he's got 13 last hits and one deny, so just not doing well for himself. Now, the Weaver is here. He's trying to... Uh, yeah... Just terrasse out that life stealer a little bit. Just scoot you back in. Just had a little bit of damage, but not really throwing any auto attacks or anything. I don't think Weaver realizes he's a ranged hero. I think that's the problem we're seeing here. 
Everything he does, he kind of just like, oh, I'm not beside him, I'm not going to auto-attack. Now we're getting on the mid lane now, trying to push down this uh, tier 1 tower, and uh, dish out a fair amount of damage. They do fortify, but there's no TPs coming in to uh, prevent this. Axe is going to come in from behind, but he doesn't really have anything to stop this. I mean, he can, uh, well, maybe he can get a taunt off, but uh, get that blade mail up, but no blink dagger. Who's that blink dagger? It's an apparition. Gets a kill down to the bottom lane. Picks up that silencer again. Oh man, he's been feeding mercilessly. 0-4-2. Only four last hits. And I mean, he is a smart silencer, so the last hits don't matter. But uh, just getting picked off that much is just a matter of not recognizing what you're up against. I mean, you've got a life stealer, an ancient apparition, and a Rubik. And he continually moves a little bit too far forward. Gets in that range of that... Uh, uh, gets within the range of uh, open wounds. And that is the rest of that. I mean, look at this. Open wounds is like melee range, like literally melee range. So Silencer has to be out of position enough that, you know, Lifestealer can get that off. And I mean, there's ways that uh, Lifestealer can get up and do shit, but you know, there's action going down. we got the uh, Lifestealer trying to run himself away. He's taking a lot of damage. He doesn't have Battle Hunger on him now. Uh, AA was dishing out the damage to the Ursa, but realizes he has to run away as the Axe is chasing him down. Weaver scooching forward. I don't know if he's going to be able to catch up and make any difference here, but the Calling Blade goes out on the Ancient Apparition finish and finishes on finishes him off. Now, Life Sealer is going to survive this, and uh, Battle Hunger just didn't take him quite enough. He doesn't have enough for his Sanji, so he now has his Sanji Yasha, but uh, he'll have to go back to bases. He's got no health left to uh, sustain this. Nagasaren, poor man's shield, Midas, and Boots is now migrating her way down towards the bottom. Axe realizes she's there because of that ward. Throws out a Battle Hunger, but uh, she's going to make her way under her tower. Riptide will clear that from her, but... Uh, Instant after she gets hit by that uh, curse of the silence. Hey, also gonna come down here. Net goes out on the Weaver and it connects. They're looking for him, and with that Riptide, it might drop him low enough that he shatters. Left we'll to keep an eye on his health. One or two more ticks. Is it gonna be enough? No. Oh my God. He was five health away from shattering. He had 68 health. Nagasar, I'm gonna catch up with the Song of the Siren and finish this off. Oh my God. No. She riptided too early. She finished off her song and riptided, but her... Oh, God. The song didn't wear off fast enough, and uh, Weaver actually scoochies himself away from that. I can't believe that. That was so close. This Weaver just, like... Oh, my God. So he's got six... It is 10% of health at which a hero shatters, 10% of their maximum health. Weaver 625 health, and he, uh, at the final tick of that uh, Frost Blast, he was down to... Uh, oh, that Ice Blast... He was down to 68 HP, so 6, H or 6 HP away from Shattering. It's absurd. And there's top lane here. Ruby's going to find himself an axe. I'm not going to like what he finds. Gets called and uh, utterly destroyed there by that axe. Axe is just starting to get out of hand. 4-0-1, and uh, he's really holding a team together. He's been a part of every single kill that they have. While uh, Hive Gaming has been uh, making it happen all across the board with kills spread out evenly amongst them. Now this Naga Siren is going to be something that we've uh, got to look out for. I mean, she's sitting on 2200 gold already. Uh, so a little late on her uh, Relic Radiance, but that is because she went for this uh, Midas and finished out the Poor Man's Shield and got the bottle and stuff first, which, I mean, is, is I think is totally acceptable. As long as you're making your impact as a Naga for a short while before you get your Radiance, then it's really not that big a deal. And she's been moving around, she's been ganking, she's been getting up in people's faces, uh, songing and uh, keeping herself safe. So she's been doing all right. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's really going to be a problem. Now, big action on the mid lane here. The Axe moves in towards this. He gets levitated back, but uh, Ursa chasing him down. He gets netted out. The Ancient Apparition trying to run himself away, but he's got a lot of DOS on him. He is going to fall. as a curse to silent up on both of these heroes. Naga going right back in. What the hell is she doing? She's got to be really careful with where she goes, but, uh, yeah, she's she might get out of this. She's a pretty quick hero. And Alexi, they're up in the middle of all this, tries to fight his way through this, and uh, might not be the best idea. Naga is coming back in there, but the uh, taunt comes out by the axe, and it does finish off that life stealer. Now, with a fade bolt, the Ursa will fall, but Song of the Siren going to allow them to run away from this. Maybe. Maybe. Weaver catches right up, does not get slowed up by that song, and, uh, oh my god, Rubik gets caught out by that mud golem. How unlucky can you be? I think he is toast here. Yeah, Elsie's going to come in and with a final Sakuchi attack, or a, a final Geminate attack, rather, we'll finish off that Rubik. So, uh, VL Gaming, now in, uh, now in the lead. 7 to 8 kills and uh, 15 minutes, 55 seconds. It's approximate game time. 
Holy hell, how is Chen been throwing up this much? Oh man, he's facing some action down here. Cold feet going down and uh, he's blocking himself up with his own creeps and those illusions. So he does fall and uh, Naga finds herself 300 gold away from her sacred relic here, 16 minutes into the game. I mean, it's not the quickest, but uh, it's definitely pretty speedy, especially considering what she's been doing in this game. So, uh, yeah, she'll clear up another creep wave or two and then make her way down to that secret shop. Now, we do have the Ursa trying to do up uh, Roshan by himself, and as those Fury Swipes stack up, we'll start to see him do more and more and more damage. And uh, here he goes. He stacks Fury Swipes. 17. 360 extra damage. Now, there is a Rocket Flare into the pit, and uh, that will be enough to scare the Ursa away. You doesn't want to be a part of that. And I don't blame him. Oh my god, is this the... Oh no. No. Life Stealer is right on top of him though, and he's moving really fast because of that Sanj. And uh, now chasing him up in a couple auto attacks later. He actually gets finished off. Now there is three people right on top of this Life Stealer. He needs something to infest into. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to get out of this last word and the D and the uh, uh, the Battle Hunger. Just tick him down, sick him down, sick him down. And uh, Clockwork gets on his way, but... Is he going to manage to survive? He gets into a creep and he infests with six health left. Oh my god. I can't believe this. Oh, is Weaver going to realize? No. Dang. I see this sitting inside his creep. He's going to be able to get himself out of this, no problem. Wow, I can't believe how low he got. Six HP and infests into a creep. Alright, I'll pop out. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh my god, he didn't kill a small one! <laughs> I feel like he actually popped out and killed him there if he wanted. Oh man. Anyways, Naga, Rubik, and AA gonna grab themselves a 2 2 up in the top lane and uh. He's gonna back themselves out of that safely. Naga, almost enough for her radiance now. She's gonna run into that axe. He's chasing her down and uh. There goes the cold feet, net, everything. They're uh, working on bringing down that axe, but he pops off the uh, blade mail and uh, is causing a lot of damage here. And uh, with that culling blade, will it finish off the Naga Siren? Ursa chasing down the Rubik finishes him off, and with one more attack, will it get the Ancient Apparition? So uh, three heroes being lost in the midst of their retreat there, and uh, BL doing a lot better. Oh, man, Clockwork hooks into his ally. And, uh, I mean, this uh, this Chen's still going to go down, but, uh, oh, that was ugly. I feel man so fast with those phase boots and the Sanjay Asha and uh, uh there it goes one more attack and uh, Chen will fall so uh there you go uh, at least a return kill picked up there 10 to 11 your kill score and uh VL doing all right doing all right let me turn off the steam notification man get out of here I don't care when a friend joins a game. Go away. Cool. Alright. So, where are we sitting now? Uh, in terms of uh, gold, I think Hive Gaming's got this a little bit. Uh, the Nagar Siren's 103 and she's been working, or she's been uh, using her Midas pretty consistently. Uh, the Chen, like I said, you can't really count him in the uh, last sit race because although that is a lot, uh, a lot of those have been uh, worthless jungle creeps, and I mean, he's doing alright, he's got himself a uh, mechanism, and uh, looks like he's actually working towards an Aghanim Scepter, but, uh, you know, he is only a Chen, and he can only do as much as his creeps can. I mean, once you just get a naked Chen by himself, he's not that great a hero. Life Stealer, meanwhile, has uh, been keeping on par with him with 85 and 1, and uh, he didn't go for that Midas, so he's a little further back, but uh, he's got himself a Sanya Yasha, and... Uh, What's he got here? Yeah, that's a full armlet. So Sanjay Yasha, armlet, and phase boots. So he's got everything he needs. Uh, that clockwork sitting just behind him with uh, 47. And uh, beyond that, I mean, you've got 30 and less for every single other hero on the dire side. So they're not doing good for gold. Now Song of the Siren will get popped off here. And uh, in the meantime, Ursa is doing Roshan. I think they should know that this is happening, though. Um, come on. you got to get a hookshot in that Rosh. Yep. Oh, my God. They're not going to see it. They have no clue. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Ursa does get finished off with that is uh, right as they realize. But they are going to hop in on this, and the cogs go down. And they're chasing this in, and the Weaver standing outside of this doing it, doing the damage. But the Ursa will fall. Now, uh, Clockwork is going to die as well, but uh, in the midst of all this, I think that uh, Hive may come out of this on top. Now, they're looking for that Ursa. His uh, Aegis has already been popped, and with a lot of damage coming out, 
They are going to finish off Ursa, so Axe and Ursa both fall in exchange for that Clockwork. Now looking for more as they chase in on that, uh, uh, as they chase in on that Silencer. And the stolen last word will finish him off. So three heroes for one, and uh, the Aegis is taken as well. So uh, despite VL getting all the golden experience from Roche, they uh, do not get uh, anything beyond that. End up uh, pretty far behind in that engagement. Now, I'd love to actually see the graphs right now. Let's check those out. So uh, Hive Gaming, yeah, as I said, despite the kill score being pretty even, their gold advantage is uh, just about 8,000, and uh, it's looking pretty bad um, in terms er, for uh, VL. Now, experience is a little bit more of a bumpy chart here as we uh, hang around 2,000. Now, both teams taking their even blows across the board, but uh, yeah. Anyways, now Axe chasing this down. There's a pause out here by the Ursa, so it uh, looks like they're going to pause and wait for that silencer to reconnect. What the hell? This Weaver, man, I have no idea what's going on with this Weaver. This is a pretty bad Weaver, not going to lie. Like I said, this is like the 8th or ninth page out of 10 for uh, of team games today, so we are pretty far down there in MMR. But, I mean, come on, Weaver. It's a pretty basic premise that you can realize as a player that if you're ranged, you can attack people when you're further away from them. And, uh, I mean, he was... He was pretty, uh, I mean, that mid lane, like I said, he could just sit up here and take pot shots at Naga all day long when she tries to last hit. He just wasn't. He was just, like, kind of sitting there, and then when Naga got close enough, she'd rip tide, and he'd take a bunch of damage and wouldn't return it. And then yeah, the same thing would happen ten seconds later, and he just get kept getting chipped down, and he's like, what the hell, why, why can't I lane against Naga? And his axe is getting chased down here, and uh, he's actually taking a lot of damage from those Naga illusions, and the Rubik will levitate him away and uh, keep him from continuing onwards. Rocket Flare connecting the Snuggle Illusion still does no damage, and uh, Axe is going to be forced back to base. Hey, hey Alti does try to catch him, but uh, we'll be a little bit far behind. We got pressure coming in here on the Tier 2, and uh, nobody's present to defend it. We'll see if they do try to with uh, some TPs. They don't have a Fortify either, so um, with this next Creep Wave approaching, this Tier 2 tower could very well fall. Two hundred fifty health, hundred fifty, fifty gone. Lacey takes that tower, and uh, no outer towers remain for Team VL. So uh, once again, that is playing into that uh, gold advantage very much as well. I mean, you're looking at six towers down on the radiant side, well, on the on the dire side, and uh, only one down on the other side. Now we do have a song of the siren into this fight. Catches all five. AA ice blast going to come in, catch four heroes, and the clockwork uh, hook shot. Going to catch three in, and oh my god, what a wipe. That was such a well-executed fight. And uh, Hive Gaming catch a five for nothing. And uh, Naga throws out the GG well play prematurely. And uh, I almost don't even blame her. That was so nice. That uh, I think VL has officially been taken out of this game because... Uh, I mean, they, they were doing fine up until then, but that one fight, just five heroes caught in the Song of the Siren... You get a three-man hookshot cogs, and then you get the AA Ice Blast on four heroes. That is just a recipe for death. I mean, you saw it right there. Five for nothing. That's absurd. That's absolutely insane. AA is sitting 300 gold away from the uh, Nagonim Scepter now, and uh, they've got themselves a set of racks. So, just uh, I'm gaming really, really taking it there with that team fight. That was huge. Absolutely huge. Uh, looking for pressure on the bottom lane. They're not uh, done pushing. As the uh, Life Sealer now has himself a Hyperstone and uh, Mithril Hammer sitting in his inventory. So I wonder if he's going for a Maelstrom. That's what or a, a Mjolnir. That's what it's looking like. But uh, Axe gets taunt in on two. The Global Silence goes down. It looks like they might turn this back around. Chasing down the Life Sealer. Addition out a lot of damage on him and he does fall. Now looking for the Naga Siren. He does get a net and will try to retreat away from this. Meanwhile, it seems getting split up. Looking for the Rubik and the AA and that might be the better bet. They're trying to find them out, and with the Levitate, they're going to find that Rubik. But uh, Chen gets a Penitence out onto the Rubik, and I think he's going to fall. There's not much that he can get out of this one. Courier's flying into the middle of this fight. Might actually get caught out there if they uh, recognize it. Clockwork on the back line, though, looking to see if he can make something out of this. And the Nagasari will destroy the Ursa. Now, Clockwork gets a uh, good set of cogs in on two. Naga pops herself out of that by popping the Illusions. It will kill off the Chen with the uh, Radiance Burn and the damage from the Chilling Touch. Clockwork's going to clean that up. So, VL gets wiped yet again in exchange for only two heroes. That Naga and that Clockwork sitting dangerously low and uh, do not end up falling in the end. So, uh, five for two. 
And, uh, is he here? Is he here? Yeah, he's got his Agonim. Just gonna fly out to him in a moment. And, uh, this Naga getting beastly. Beastly, beastly. Now, a GG is called by the enemy team, so we'll see if they do actually let the Ancient fall or if they're gonna stay in this game. But, uh, I have a feeling they might tap out. I mean, this is... Yeah, there it goes. Two really bad fights in a row, and, uh, that was it. And, uh, he's easy called the Ancient version, but, uh, yeah, that one team fight at mid, that really deflated it. I mean, VL was behind for sure, but uh, I think they were still in a position where they could have come back before that. But, like, just absolute blatant five-man wipe and then a loss of barracks, that is just so much to deal with. I mean, you just can't. It, it's gone. You're, you're done. That, that hits, you're just toast. And uh, just, oh, man, that was huge. That was huge. So a 25-minute, 17-second GG is taken out there. And uh, that will be it. So, everybody, thank you so much for watching. It has been a great time. And uh, as always, check me out on Twitter and Twitch. You can follow me at Captain Canuck Dota. And if, on Twitch at the same thing, at twitch.tv slash Captain Canuck Dota. Um, once again, I'll be broadcasting the 82L Casters versus Admins game this Tuesday. Uh, season 3 will... Be uh, will continue on on Thursday and I believe we will have news on the uh, Amateur Dota 2 League Invitational coming up pretty soon thereafter so check that out it will be a great time I cannot wait um, yeah, that's, that's been it for now signing off have yourselves a great time and uh, always, as always check back with me again for more Dota 2 action